If you are here tonight, thank you for coming. If you are not here tonight, welcome. It is, of course, okay that you couldn't make it, and we've been thinking about you between the time this was recorded and now. Several times, and then exponentially more after the recording. Wherever you are, starting now, here, but well before now, there, know that you have been in our thoughts. Often this is something we only expect from those close family members and long-lost friends. But here we are, a room full of strangers, thinking about you. On your train to work in New York. Your coat matches your shoes. Nice. In Sweden, riding your bicycle to the fish market. Your cheeks flush with color. It's cold out there. I wish I spoke Swedish so I could tell you something nice. In Texas, on your way to the barbecue restaurant, the one that sells cigarettes and makes fresh lemonade. We love that place. I wish I spoke Texas so I could tell you something racist. You may have found us by chance or may have been looking for us. In either case, we have thought about you specifically. You once said stand up is for crippled narcissists. Fine. You once said stand up is the only true art. Correct. Maybe not the only true art. Some say it's vegan pastries. Some say it's the apology email. Some say it's the rolling stop. Some say that the only true art is forcing the one thing that you know about a topic into a conversation about that topic, regardless of whether or not it is constructive. But all of you are correct. And no, sign language is not universal. That couldn't be further from the truth. Not only are they all different, oftentimes countries have different sign languages. You would have been closer to the truth if you had said all verbal languages are the same. Why would you say that? It was very wrong and you said it way too quickly. Thank you for making me look that up. You're the crippled narcissist. Some of you are the same person from before. It's understood that you have only now began to think of us. We are not worried about any inequity in this relationship. We're happy to be thinking about you. And now you're here, thinking about us. It was the earliest you could have reasonably been expected to do so. All is forgiven, and thank you for thinking of us. Several times, and then exponentially more after this recording. All right, guys, let's do this. All right, thank you, guys. Oh, man. Oh, man, I couldn't be happier. What an honor. Thank you for being here. Um, uh, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't imagine a better night. I'm just glad there wasn't a mass shooting today. That's all I really care about. <laughs> uh, guys, my name's Nate. Um, I'm a good person. I, uh, I just want to start off by saying that. You can't tell these days. <laughs> Ladies, I mean, it's your world, okay? I'm on board. Um, I'm all caught up on Handmaid's Tale. Uh, I sit down to pee now. Uh, no, I've sat down to pee for a while. Smartphones, ever since. I've pretty much been a hard feminist ever since I got my Galaxy S8. You gotta be productive, fellas. Be productive. If you're not sitting down to pee, I don't know what the hell you're doing with your time. It's a woman's economy, stay competitive. What are you doing up there? You're pissing on your shoes, that's what you're doing. You're up here pissing on your shoes. The rest of us are down here running several small businesses. Or one Fortune 500 company. I'm doing most of my work on the toilet at this point. No, ladies, hopefully men are taking this opportunity to uh, correct their behavior. I, um, you know, I, I hated Pepe Le Pew. I always hated Pepe Le Pew. I, I didn't understand it. It caused me anxiety as a young boy. Um, I was confused. I didn't know why this rape squirrel was... What is this? Who is this squirrel who rapes and why is that what we have to do to enjoy our favorite time of the week? 
The squirrel who rapes. I know, I know, it was a skunk, but I was focused on the rape, really. I was, I didn't have time to parse small mammals. There was a full on rape going on. And, that's just as strange, it was strange. It taught me that, you know, men could be animals because somebody had to, somebody did Pepe Le Pew. Somebody made that. That's an odd legacy for an artist. <laughs> it's a very strange way to handle your sexual deviancies, you know? <laughs> Illustrate them and show them to children. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, a good, I'm a good person. I've, I've always uh, been a good person. I don't identify with jerking off in front of someone. I didn't know that was a thing. Um, I've never tried it. Um, if I had, I'd still be doing it. I uh, wouldn't have been able to finish. Um, I'd still be just yanking away like a lawnmower. Just, I, I know I look like a performer, but I'm a little bit camera shy. Um, you know, I don't understand how you could just make somebody responsible for your deviancies like that. Never done anything like that. You know, low-level fuckboy shit, you know? <laughs> I hit on my chiropractor's receptionist. That was a low point. Uh, don't do that. What are you doing, buddy? Um, you're not here to get chose. You're here to get looked at, you know, <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> Maybe take the day off, Stallion. Uh, <laughs> hey, what do you do when you're not here at the office? Oh, well, uh, I take classes at UCLA. I like to make my own jewelry. What do you do when you're not paying a medicine man to sort through your crumbling infrastructure? <laughs> Good one. Uh, well, I like to iron my money. Um, I like to charge my Bluetooths. I like to keep my Bluetooths charged. Um, I like to keep my Bluetooths fully charged. I'm an established elder statesman with lots of business to attend to via Bluetooth. Uh, and I will tell anybody that'll listen what it was like to write directions down on paper. <laughs> you remember that? Of course you don't. I'll get out of here. That's not the exit. I'm back. Get it? No. Pretty sure I could vote when you were born. I'll see you later. You did used to have to write directions down on paper. That's, it's a for the full two generations that have no idea what I'm talking about when I say that now. First of all, you were tethered to a wall. <laughs> and you had to wait for the person at the place where you were calling to get back to their wall. <laughs> then they had to answer the phone without even knowing who was calling them. Yeah. You might have to hear in someone's voice that they regretted answering the telephone. That's a part of socialization that has just gone away. And then if you could get their address from them before they thought of a reason not to give it to you, then you wrote it down on paper and you went and got marijuana. I tried to explain this to a 24 year old recently. She looked at me like I told her I fought in the Korean War. I was like, wait, what? How did you send text messages? How did you get text messages? You couldn't do it. Only the president could send and receive text messages on a cell phone the size of a refrigerator from the basement of the Pentagon. No, but I got engaged. That's, I, I couldn't. Thank you. Thank you. You're goddamn right. No. Um, met my fiance at a, at a yoga studio. Um, outside of yoga. I followed her out of yoga. <laughs> and uh, she, she saved me from being the kind of person that would follow a woman out of yoga. <laughs> Real quick. What'd you just say to me? Get over here. <laughs> do you do this all the time? Don't answer that. Yes, I'll marry you.
No, I highly recommend it, uh, fellas. Get your get get uh, get yourself an alibi. That's what I say. <laughs> A lot of accusations flying around out there, fellas. <laughs> You get yourself a character witness. <laughs> and you do what they say. You find somebody you like what they like and... Or you just find somebody that likes what they like enough to not give a fuck whether or not you like what they like. You, you do what they say and then maybe they'll testify on your behalf in a court of law. <laughs> Nate, why weren't you at the Woman's March? Oh, well, um, my gal works real hard so she wanted to sleep in. And then she put her feet in my mouth. Um, how about that? I hosted the Woman's March. I hosted one Woman's March. How about that? Think globally, act locally. That's what she tells me as she jams her foot in my mouth. <laughs> Is that too much for the album? We can cut, we can cut anything out. We can cut anything out. Um, no, you know who I really feel for? Uh, Melania Trump. I feel the most for Melania Trump because she's clearly a spy. She's uh, <laughs> the most spy-looking spy that I've ever seen. <laughs> Please, that is a, a, the most lizard-looking. I spy with my little eye. The first lady of the United States of America is a motherfucking spy. That is a spy, and she is sad because she can't do her job. She was trained to fuck in 20 languages or whatever she was trained to do. And it's just, <laughs> like, she's just the most Bond villain looking Bond villain I've ever seen. <laughs> if they were auditioning for a Bond villain and Melania Trump walked in, they'd be like, it's too much, it's too much. <laughs> we're sorry, thank you, Melania, thank you very much. Little on the nose, thank you. <laughs> we are going for subtlety and, um, Good luck, you're doing great work, but not on this project. And she just, you've seen her, she just stands behind him. She's just like, oh, please, Vladimir, just let me use my knives, please. <laughs> Why did you raise me in laboratory in active volcano if I can't use my knives? <laughs> no, Melania, you've got to let Donald be Donald. I, please, it's America's, enjoy yourselves. Just let me poison one stepchild, I will just poison one stepchild. I'm so good at poisoning stepchildren, please. I will clip brake cables on Air Force One and parachutes to safeties in Bahamas, please. Um, I've been in LA for 10 years now. I like it, I like it a lot. Um, LA is, uh, LA is perfect. It makes perfect sense to me at this point. Sure. Plastic surgery is an ethnicity. <laughs> but it just, you know, it's New York if New York was in Hawaii. And that's, you know, it's disorienting because you're like, why are you acting like that? You know, it's like, hey man, why are you acting? Oh, you've been in traffic for four hours for the last 30 years? Okay, I get it. <laughs> Every day for the last 30 years? Okay, that makes sense. There is a, there is, plastic surgery in my neighborhood there's a lot of plastic surgery and um, I just uh, I feel bad for plastic surgeons because you never see the victories <laughs> you always see the losses I mean <laughs> you never miss it when somebody looks like an armadillo with a human mouth you know <laughs> But nobody ever shouts out their plastic surgeon, you know? People love their dry cleaner in LA. <laughs> every, every dry cleaner I go to, there's headshots all over the... LA, why do you think that your dry cleaner gives a fuck about your career? It's so strange. I've been in dozens of dry cleaners in LA. I've never recognized a single headshot. If you are dropping off your own dry cleaning, your dry cleaner doesn't want your headshot, okay? <laughs> Why do you think you book one Bud Light commercial, the victory parade starts as your dry cleaners? 
They've never seen your Bud Light commercial. You've seen the TV in the back. It's either Telemundo or the Korean channel that I don't know. I've never seen that, that channel outside of a dry cleaner. <laughs> I like my neighborhood. I do. I live, in, I live next to a yacht club. I live next to a yacht club in a rent-controlled apartment because I like to keep rich people on their toes. I like to make eye contact while I hang my laundry from my patio furniture. No, I, I live next to a yacht club because gentrification is a problem. So I'm not afraid to live in a neighborhood that is nice and has always been nice. I don't need my neighborhood to have been taken from generations of Latino families or in this neighborhood's case, taken from generations of Korean families who took it from generations of Latino families. Is this too close to home for some of you? Or should I say too close to someone else's home? Sure, would I like for my yoga studio to have been a food pantry? Of course I would. Would I like to go to a chocolatier that used to help single mothers do their taxes? <laughs> Obviously, I would like that. But some of us have to diversify Marina Del Rey, California. It's a nice neighborhood. I get jumpy in some neighborhoods. Any neighborhood with graffiti on the trees? Why the trees? I'm willing to bet that your target audience does not read trees. Any neighborhood with a Boost mobile store? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I feel like 12 liquor stores can't hurt a community like one Boost mobile store does. <laughs> Why are we letting Boost do this to our communities? Far as I can tell, Boost Mobile only works at bus stops on speakerphone. It's no way to communicate. I stay in my car so I don't get sucked into a conversation that was not meant for me. Anybody here like to put your phone on speaker in public? Yeah? Any other full blown psychopaths in the room? Who do you think you are? <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you are that you're gonna make us listen to the whole thing? You're gonna make us listen to both sides of this bullshit? How far up your own ass do you get cell phone reception that you're gonna make us listen to both sides of this bullshit? Don't get me wrong, I like technology. <laughs> a good sign. I like technology. I'm not that good with it. I don't want to brag about being stupid, but I might have voted for Donald Trump if he had told me that I would never have to download Adobe Flash Player ever again. <laughs> Please make it stop. I can't be the only one having this much trouble with Adobe Flash Player. I'm pretty sure last week Adobe Flash Player told me I needed Adobe Flash Player to use Adobe Flash Player. <laughs> Please make it stop. But he did not promise that, so he's a racist psychopath. <laughs> Again, I love doing this, that joke for millennials. They're just like, you just go into preferences and you can shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Just... Give me another Flash player. Somebody, somebody invent a new Flash player. Um, I don't know, it'd be a better invention than most of the stuff on the market. Not in favor of self-driving cars, I think that's a bad idea. First of all, nobody in this room has ever felt confident sitting down on a toilet with a sensor on it. <laughs> Never one time. 
Yeah, because he knew you were going to get the fire hose. You knew you were going to get public toilet water inside your body. And it doesn't leave you. You don't come back from that. I got toilet water from the Milwaukee airport from six years ago inside me right now. But that's what we're doing with our inventions. We're putting toilet water inside each other. I don't know, I think we, are, we, don't, we can no longer tell the difference between an invention and an idea. Used to be easier, you know? Here's a question, which came first, the hose or the straw? I didn't know either but I was pretty sure I could invent the second one. <laughs> it's the same thing, it's just smaller and backwards. <laughs> I looked it up, it was the hose. The hose was patented in 1668. The straw wasn't patented until 1885, which means that for over 200 years, people walked around like assholes drinking their gin tonics through a goddamn garden hose. <laughs> because they lived in a magical time when, <laughs> when there was no difference between ideas and inventions. Uh, anything could happen back then, you know? And people had shame and humility and they didn't think that they could run up and patent a short, straight, backwards hose for their gin and tonics. <laughs> Before sliced bread. That's when that was magical time. They always talk about since sliced bread. They won't shut the fuck up about everything that happened since sliced bread. But can you imagine what it was like living in a time when portioning a loaf of bread made you a force for change in the world? <laughs> oh my God. What else was still available? You know? It's a magical time. Since sliced bread, nothing. Nothing worth a fuck. If the twist high, fine. The twist high. You need the twist eye, otherwise your sliced bread's all over the floor. <laughs> Couple things, what? White out? Oh good, you figured out that selling a gallon of paint in half ounce bottles was gonna be... <laughs> profitable for your families. Now your grandson gets laid in Cancun three times a year. Congrats on your patent, but kindly go fuck yourself. A lot of supply side inventions, you know. Not anything that we need, just something that somebody came up with and got, somehow got into the market, and that's what we're stuck with now, you know? Blankets with sleeves. <laughs> Bottled water and shit. Supply side inventions. I don't know how some of this shit may, look me in my fucking face. And tell me that the market demanded self-driving toilets, okay? Look me in my fucking face and tell me that at a bowling alley, you need self-driving toilets. You can't even keep doors on the stalls. I'll flush the toilet at a bowl. I rented the shoes. I'll flush the toilet at a bowling alley. Boosh, boosh. I got it every time. I don't need, spare me the public enema. Thank you. But that's what we're doing. We're putting toilet water in each other. I don't know who's inventing this shit. I know who invented, I know exactly who invented the automatic toilet flushing system. <laughs> His name is John T. Barrett, patent number US 479179. I Googled it in a bathroom stall with my pants around my ankles because I want him dead and I want his family dead. <laughs> you are putting toilet water inside me, friend? Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. Buddy. You do not deserve your mansion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's just any, any asshole with Wi-Fi can be fucking Leonardo da Vinci now. We already had self-driving cars. They're called trains. Trains. That's what trains are. That's what they're going to walk this back to. Because these things, the robots are going to keep killing people. And they're going to have to keep, they're going to, what, well, what if we put them in a row? On a track. We'll put them on a track. Oh. That was trains? Okay, that was trains. <laughs> Has anybody got the patent on trains yet? <laughs> oh, cool. What about trains with sleeves?
Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, see, that back then, anything was possible. Leonardo da Vinci got credit for over 500 inventions. Most of them were just drawings in a notebook. I think that's awesome. I also think the word doodle hadn't been invented yet. Because that's not how shit works now. The reason is he was a, he was, he lived an amazing life. He was a military contractor and a member of a painter's union. Oh, wow. That life, that life does not exist anymore. You either fly drone strikes or you like watercolors. You either murder people with robots in the sky or you paint sailboats. Can't do both, not anymore. You wanna murder people with robots in the sky, the first thing they do is make you turn in your watercolors. <laughs> the military knows, painters make shitty killers. Also, if your painters are your killers, there's not much left to fight for. <laughs> but can you imagine that, getting credit for just, just being in history for your, your trapper keeper? <laughs> The patent troll, that's what he invented, the patent troll. God forbid you made a prototype of a tank out of iron and steel. Sorry, uh, Leo da Vinci drew a picture of a rifle sticking out of a turtle shell. So we're gonna go ahead and give him credit for the weapon that wins World War II. Uh, why don't you take your non-functioning lawnmower back to the river, peasant. We still let one guy invent everything though, Steve Jobs, uh, you know. There's a perfect example, a good invention, the iPhone, changed society. Supply side invention, the iPhone screen. Because now all you iPhone people are trapped. You have to go to the Apple store twice a year because it's the new DMV and <laughs> you, gotta get your, you gotta get your screens fixed. I've never seen an Android with a cracked screen, I've never, seen an iPhone that didn't look like it had been beaten with a sock full of nickels. <laughs> you people are viewing the world through the shattered windshield of a fatal car crash. I could throw my phone out the window of a moving car. It would bounce back into my hand mid-conversation. <laughs> There's nothing left to invent anymore. Nothing left for assholes to invent anymore. Vape flavors. You can invent vape flavors. That's the, <laughs> that's the last thing. Or there's a healthy market out there for ruining everybody's favorite childhood candy flavor. <laughs> I used to vape before it was cool, back when there was only one vape flavor, the original vape flavor, other people's fajitas. Uh, yeah. It's the best. It's the best. And everybody loves it. It's a hit. Other pe there's nothing better than when somebody else's fajitas walk in the room. Oh. I'll vape the shit out of your fajitas. Oh, God. Oof. Not cool, they would say, as I hovered over their fajitas. You'll see, I told them. And I was right. I was right. Because now, now we live in a vape-based economy. And all the kids are hooked. Every kid in America's got a car battery in their pocket that they pull out and feed into their neck. <laughs> and then make a sit in it. Look, vape dorks, can you just blow it over your shoulder? I would be fine with vapes if you just, smokers blow it over their shoulder. You people trap us <laughs> in your cotton candy basement. <laughs> it's disgusting. I, 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 did I just taste your lungs? What is, why would you make that happen? Why would you make that a real, what is, what's on the bottle? I, cause I taste butterscotch flood damage. That's what I taste. <laughs> what's the, how do they sell it to you? Well, this year's called dentist office toothpaste. Uh, everybody uh, else around you tastes a uh, scented candle in a drainage ditch. Uh, <laughs> to you, it tastes like spearmint. <laughs> Weed vapes. Love weed vapes, weed vapes are the best. Smoke that weed. Weed is actually still not legal in the entire country. It's hilarious to me. You can eat weed now. You didn't used to be able to eat weed. I can eat weed again. The dosage is right there. It's beautiful. 
Used to be real, real Russian roulette, eating weed back in the day. Yeah, it was not advisable. I would do it, it was not advisable. You didn't put one bullet in a revolver, you put five bullets in the revolver, and then maybe you didn't shoot yourself in the face because you put your hippie friend in charge of the weed butter. You might have a nice day in the park. You might find out you were allergic to your own brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have a demon allergy. I found that out early on. I'm allergic to my demons and um, brownies with marijuana in them unlock the gates to hell. <laughs> Eating weed was like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Candy strong enough to murder you with childhood memories. <laughs> I used to eat weed like Asians drink. It didn't agree with me, and you could see it on my face. Thank you for laughing at that. That's a joke about Asian glow. Um, if you don't know what Asian glow is, well then which one of us is being more racist right now? It's because Asians have a more common alcohol allergy. They get rosy in the cheeks. because they're genetically more pure. <laughs> Sorry, Nazis. Um, they are. They, uh, they didn't diversify like some ethnicities, and that's the process through which humans build up a tolerance to poisons like alcohol. So if you're good at drinking, it's because you're a mud blood pig person. <laughs> Probably get yourself a banjo. <laughs> no, everybody does something though. Uh, eat weed or CrossFit. People like to do CrossFit. <laughs> CrossFit's like if a panic attack was a lifestyle. <laughs> it's community service without the community. I, uh, I don't do CrossFit. I, I just help my friends move. That's really what CrossFit is. Do you like helping your friends move but don't have any friends? CrossFit. I just like my activity to have a point to it. You know, I want to hoop or a net. I want to, tr I want to trick my body into thinking there's a reason for this <laughs> bullshit. You know, something to go against. Even yoga, it's you versus whatever awful mixtape the instructor has put together for you. Whatever hour and 15 minutes of world music she's assembled over eight trips to Burning Man or some shit. <laughs> Trying to learn how to meditate for the first time, she pops in a 90-minute bongo solo from her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> Who put this woman in charge of my spirituality? Some of you think you maybe never tried yoga, but you have if you've ever tried to take a shit in an airplane bathroom. <laughs> touch with yourself doing airplane yoga. No, I do like sports. I'm a big football fan. Excited for football season. Um, every time I watch the NFL, I realize how far away I am from a career in the NFL. <laughs> Last season, I, I saw a guy run a kickback for a touchdown, and it's the hardest thing I can imagine doing in sports. And he, as he got into the clear, the last 30, 40 yards, you know, he, he watched himself on the jumbo truck. <laughs> <laughs> if I see myself reflected in more than one mirror at one time, I lose control of all my motor skills. <laughs> this dude is running from 11 300-pound murder machines. Still has time to watch television. <laughs> Himself on live television. If I see myself on the security monitor at 7-Eleven, I belly flop into a Dorito wrap.
my career in the league is over. You ever see yourself on the monitor? You never do anything cool, you know. You never do anything productive on the security monitor. You catch yourself, catch a glimpse of yourself. It's just a ghost of Christmas present. Just showing your life to you. Oh, there you are, Nate, again. Hunched over a counter, just a failed pile of a consumer. Inaccurate, inefficient, taking tube socks back to a Walmart on a Wednesday afternoon. Good Lord. But yeah, go ahead, scratch your leg with your other leg. This is really happening. You ever try to find it? Why do you try to find it? For those of you listening at home, I just played a video of an ostrich chasing a man on a mountain bike. <laughs> no, I, um, I couldn't be more supportive of the players. I don't, this uh, whole anthem protest, it's clearly an important moment. There's clearly a problem in society. One in 15 black men are in prison right now. One in 15 white men are at Starbucks right now. <laughs> And if one in 15 white men were in prison, uh, prison might have Starbucks. So, <laughs> white people just act like you know a little bit, right? It's <laughs> the players aren't complaining because somebody put pickles on their hamburgers, right? <laughs> people are getting shot in the fucking streets by, with taxpayer money. I don't know, maybe all the good cops became firefighters. I don't think that's true, but you never see a firefighter beat the shit out of an old lady he saved from a burning building. <laughs> Stop smoldering, ma'am. <laughs> you, you never see a firefighter tase a cat out of a tree. <laughs> White people are acting like black people should be acting. If there was a black NRA, I would join it today out of principle. White people are losing it. Couldn't even handle when they did end zone dances. NFL players couldn't do an end zone dance for 20 years. That was a dark time in the league. I can't think of a better time to dance than when you score a touchdown in the National Football League. You score a touchdown in the NFL, you should have to dance for 90 seconds. It should be how they determine the extra point. No more kickers. You could make a kicker dance. You, you gotta you put a helmet on a skinny white dude and make him do the worm real good. Seven points. <laughs> fat kicker, please. Make a fat kicker dance. Nothing will bring the country together like a fat kicker dancing. Why wouldn't they, why? Why do we care so much about football players? Why does it, why does it shake us to our core? I don't know why we get so puritanical. It's not the Vatican. It's mortgage.bank. Won't be the same name field in five years anyway. Let them do their dance moves. We will bulldoze Indian burial grounds to build a Chipotle. I can't watch a wide receiver salsa dance in Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, white people are losing it. I can say that I have a white friend. <laughs> white people, stay in the pocket. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. You don't have to retreat into your lizard brain. You elected a tantrum. Mexicans are digging tunnels. If you're gonna be racist, be a smart racist. 
You're just gonna make them feel better about their tunnels. Whoa, we're specks of dust hurling through the universe. Nobody knows the answer. I'm whining about toilet water. But you might as well build a door in the woods. You might as well build a door in the woods and lock it if it makes you feel better. <laughs> Kids in cages, you should be ashamed of yourself. You're fucking losing it, white people. God damn. What are you scared of? What do you think's gonna happen? Rapists? They fucking came through thousands of, hundreds of miles, thousands of miles of rocks and fucking sand in the heat, the moon, if the moon was the sun. <laughs> not for air conditioning, not for, not for a job to make a better life for their family. No, to rape. <laughs> no, definitely to rape. That's how bad Mexicans want to rape. <laughs> fucking horny white lie, you fucking assholes. <laughs> Nobody wants to fuck your sloppy mall daughters. <laughs> if there is a race war, I just hope they don't settle it with a race. people will lose that. I don't care how much CrossFit we do, we're losing that. No, you know who would win that race? The ostrich. The ostrich would win that race, hands down. I don't know why there's no football teams with an ostrich for a mascot, um, real quick. They're the fastest animal on two legs and it's not even close. I'm serious, I did see a video of an ostrich. It turned my world upside down. Did you know an ostrich can run 15 miles an hour with no arms? <laughs> when was the last time you tried to run full speed with your arms behind your back? <laughs> Give it a shot, you'll lose all your teeth. <laughs> ostrich is just up there. Just running with its neck, just up here. Just a feat of engineering. Just fucking going, man. But we made up this horrible lie about the ostrich that they're cowardly, that they stick their heads in the sand. They don't. Female ostriches will turn their eggs with their faces. It's pretty hardcore, actually. <laughs> and then the rest of them have to get out of view because their heads, they got those big food faces. They're 20 feet up in the air. They're like a balloon at Coachella that you find your friends with. <laughs> Lions and tigers, like, meet me at ostrich for lunch. They're, they're out there, man. They're nature's kick returner. How are they not at least one football team? Just dipping and diving, just running. Not in the caged in van wondering when they stop serving brunch at the resort. They're out there running for their lives. They'll run up next to you on the highway, wink at your girl. Turn your head for a second. Ostrich is taking your girl to Denny's right up under your nose. And she'll be back. because he's an ostrich. <laughs> but you're gonna have to hide that from your families. <laughs> and you better hope that on your wedding day, you don't have to sick your groomsmen on some emotional ostrich outside the church. <laughs> Dipping and diving, doesn't care about your groomsmen. He's been running from lions and tigers and bears for millennia. Treat your groomsmen like a goddamn cone drill, all right? <laughs> Stepping on your tin cans on your honeymoon mobile. clucking promises at your girl through a rolled up window. <laughs> What's he saying? Your mother-in-law will scream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Ostriches taste good. They taste good. It's impressive. I'm impressed that they're still alive. Horrifying feet, the ostrich. Oh, you thought I was done? <laughs> Track star legs, dinosaur feet. That's, ostrich has no business leaving the house in the morning with its feet uncovered. No, if there is a race war, they'll probably settle it with uh, assault rifles. Um, I think it was 20, maybe 25 mass shootings ago. I got into a fight with a kid on Facebook because I'm a grown man that gets in Facebook fights. And uh, he told me that my car was just as dangerous as an AR-15 assault rifle. I said, hold the fuck on. You have an 05 Honda Accord. One of the windows doesn't work. But okay, 19 year old from Arkansas, let's talk about this for th three hours. <laughs> I'm not good at time management. <laughs> All right, I mean, it's not even realistic. Like, uh, the, the, we've lost something in this country. I'll, I'll pretend, okay? I'll pretend. If I wanted to kill as many people as I could with my 05 Honda Accord, <laughs> Okay, I would get in it, I would go to Walmart, and I would buy an AR-15 assault rifle. Because those things are fucking meat ruiners. We don't, and we know it, it's ridiculous. You don't, hundreds of millions of Americans who get to work every day riding their AR-15s. You fucking idiot. This is not realistic, okay? I don't, it's, these are horseshit lies that you're telling. We don't, you don't need two assault rifles to raise four kids in the suburbs. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. We have these fucked ups. I don't buy into this good guy with a gun fantasy. That's just some horseshit that they tell men with no law enforcement experience, no military training, so that they can entertain some fantasy about saving a shopping mall like they wouldn't shoot the cashier at Gadzooks while they were trying to get their Glock out of their hooded sweatshirt. If you don't feel safe without an assault rifle, it tells me a couple things about you. First of all, you never made clean contact with a pinata. <laughs> you were straight air balls the whole time. You were nothing but air. You didn't make clean contact one time. Other kids did the damage. They got candy. You got tears. It taught you to hate yourself. It taught you to hate Mexicans. I don't want you around guns, and I definitely don't want you around people with your guns, man. Those people don't have your candy. The people that took your candy are long gone, okay? And if they did, you would just ruin the candy because your new wiffle ball bat shoots 800 rounds per minute. All right, let's lighten the mood. Uh, Abortion. Um, I support a woman's right to an abortion, um, obviously, mostly because I have paid for one. And when you go to the school, you root for the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, learned a lot from that. Um, first of all, if men could get pregnant, you could get an abortion at a fucking ATM. Uh, it's not even, it's not even realistic. That's, if men could get pregnant, part of becoming a notary public would be learning how to administer an abortion. You could go to FedEx and get your weekends back. We'd be giving them to each other. No guy in this room would be like, oh, I guess I'll just do what the good book says. Get the fuck out of here. It's just men controlling women. I don't care how Christian you are, if you needed one win to make your fantasy football playoffs, and Tom Brady got pregnant, you would want that handled in the locker room like a sprained ankle. Lie to me all you want, just don't lie to yourselves, gentlemen. 
I learned a lot from that. The woman told me she was pregnant. I was like, all right, well, this is more difficult for you than it is for me, so I support what you want to do. It's your, whatever you choose, I support. I just want, to do, I just want you to know that I, I want what you want. She looked me dead in the face. And she said, oh, that's nice. But what I want is for you to know that I don't give a fuck what you want. <laughs> and I fell in love. Uh, because I knew shit was gonna get handled. That is, uh, that is some gangster ass shit. That's not how somebody that wants to start a family with you talks to your face. I get to, I, I don't, I don't understand our obsession with guns, but I, I do understand the, uh, the fear component, um, because our brains don't give a shit about us. It's not really, we're not even in control in the least bit. Like, I grind my teeth, that's something a lot of people do, I think, but I did it my whole life, and I used to wake my parents, I used to pop my teeth. Like, I have to wear these, this big stupid thing, and, uh, because when I go to sleep at night, my brain, eats my teeth. <laughs> eats my teeth. That's the worst thing you could eat. That's above glass and concrete. Glass has food value. Eats my teeth. You need your teeth. You gotta have your teeth. Caveman, you broke your jaw, you died. You couldn't eat an elk through a straw. There was no Jamba Juice. <laughs> now, I could get new teeth, but my brain doesn't know that. <laughs> so it's just altogether destructive. And I understand. I understand that we are just uh, limited by our own, uh, our own existences. I saw a guy in a Nissan Versa with a Hawaii license plate not in Hawaii. <laughs> Which means that he bought a boat ticket for a Nissan Versa. And I just want to say, man, you got to trust. You got to trust yourself to get to another Versa. You're going to get there, man. Life is a series of Versas. It's a fifteen hundred dollar boat ticket. It's at least half the value of a Nissan Versa. What are you doing? You can't do that. You, I'm not saying ditch it in a parking lot, walk away like there's a bomb in the trunk. I'm saying get on Honolulu Craigslist, flip that Versa. It's probably a very nice Craigslist in Honolulu. Have a little fun, get a couple things for the road, flip your Versa, add it to your Versa boat ticket money, find a new Versa, start a new life with a new Versa that's in the same place in life as you are that wants the same things that you do. There's other fish in the sea, but you don't want any old fish. You want your Versa. You got it in your head that that's the only Versa. Well, it is the only Versa in the sea. There's never been another Versa on a boat before. You made that happen, friend. That is a prison of your own design. You got emotional about your first Versa, started sailing it all over the goddamn Pacific Ocean, and now you're stuck in Nebraska with a Versa that can't stop thinking about Hawaii. But it's hard to trust yourself. It's hard to trust yourself. Your brain will do whatever it wants. I went skydiving. And uh, I was always told that skydiving felt like flying. It does not. You are definitely falling. You are falling very fast. But, and you have a small French woman on your back and she, she is the only thing that's gonna save you. And you are very happy that she's there. But what happens is you fall for long enough that your brain tricks you into thinking that you're flying. Well, okay. If your brain can trick you into thinking that you're flying, then your brain can definitely trick you into thinking that you're falling. One of those things you do naturally. 
And I don't know, white folks, just fall slower. <laughs> maybe don't get the, the F, maybe just get the F-150 next time. <laughs> maybe don't eat the whole dessert pizza tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's not Mexican's fault that you didn't make the payments on your pontoon boat. And it's not about race, but I don't know, somebody tell white people that. It's about class and consumerism and just this fucking absurd culture that we're living in. I traveled the whole country. In the last couple of weeks, I was in Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Wisconsin, Illinois, and North Dakota, or North Carolina. And every fucking exit on every fucking highway is a Bob Evans and a fucking Cracker Barrel. And Mexicans didn't do that, dude. <laughs> They got you juiced up on this life. You are just preferred customers, man. It's not, you can make it from Salt Lake City to Pittsburgh only using drive throughs okay? Mexicans didn't do that. And I get double digit mailers a month for, you get those invitations from banks to just ruin your own credit. I don't like those. I don't like how much they know. I don't like their tone. I just feel like they're just calling me an asshole every time. Hey, Nate, bank's here. Listen, we saw that you had a little money. We were wondering if maybe we should have it. <laughs> hey, Nate, bank's again. Listen, we sat down with our lawyers and crunched a few numbers. Turns out you are our kind of dipshit consumer. How'd you like to borrow $10,000? You pay us back $13,000. Or you take your time with it, you pay us back $97,000 fucking dollars. <laughs> How about it, Nate, huh? We just want you to have any old little horse shit you set your little heart on. Any old little trinkets or nonsense? Yeah, you can finance things you don't need or you can finance things you don't need to finance. We're a one-stop shop for horrible financial decisions, huh? How about it? Yeah, you ever charge a lap dance online? We support that. How'd you like to finance five years worth of almond milk? We saw you did that in 2006. <laughs> Nate, how'd you, like to, how'd you like to buy a house you'll never own? How about it, huh? You wanna be underwater on a house, huh? Well, we're the goddamn beach. Nate, why don't you rent your rims, Nate? We just want you to have the most least valuable shit you could possibly own. <laughs> Would you please rent your hubcaps, goddammit, huh? Nate, don't just not own your car, not own several parts of your car. <laughs> Originate several bad investments. Assemble an entire vehicle out of horrible financial decisions. It's your own transformer. Do you like science fiction, Nate? <laughs> it's Optimus Subprime. How about it, Nate? It's a car that you own that turns into a car you don't own anymore. Um, maybe I should go back to checkbooks. Anybody here still use a checkbook? Yeah? I saw a guy pull a checkbook out in the express lane at the grocery store. Exactly. Now, next time that happens, just forget about your afternoon. Take a step back, you watch the rest of the line lose their minds. There was four people in front of me, they all folded their arms and started looking for eye contact, like, oh my God, checkbook. Are you seeing this? Checkbook, please. Aisle five, checkbook, get in the game. I'm gonna need you to stare through the back of this man's skull for the duration. Oh my God, die on your shoes, old man. You die on your shoes in front of my son. It was palpable hate. And he was like 80, 90, maybe never sent an email. If you've outlived your life expectancy, 25 items or less does not apply to you. You do what you gotta do. He was awesome, he had fun with it. He clearly liked to do it. He likes to press pause on people's day. He stared them down a little bit like, oh, oh. Does anybody have a pen? I'm sorry, am I putting you out right now? Well, why don't you stop counting the items in my cart? How about that? 
what are you, a narc? If they, if they made one big can of fish, I'd have bought it, but they don't, so I had to buy 40 small ones. Oh, and I start counting shit. How many worthless generations am I looking at right now? 34, 45, what are you, 19 back there? Checkbook, Google tube it, learn something, cupcake. It's a contract between people from back when we were worth a fuck. No, I don't need the date, sweetheart. I got it here in my paper hand calendar. You guys, that's been it. I've been Nate. Thank you so much, you guys. Thanks, guys.